North America's relationship with esports has always been a unique and interesting one. Five of Forbes' most valuable esports organizations hail from the region, yet NA achieves startlingly little in comparison to its financial backing. It has garnered a reputation because, despite not being particularly good in any esport, North America offers bountiful entertainment in the form of drama and in game blunders. Oh no! Summit! No! Oh, that is. Uh... Valorant's scene in North America seemed to be on a similar track, as the region's tier 1.5 through 2 scenes became cesspools for drama. Which is an incredible thing to tweet when your coach has cheated. <laughs> Do you not find that to just be yeah. an insane thing to tweet? It is insane, right? Haha, yeah. -ha, we cheated and won the first map. What? <laughs> yeah, that is weird. I feel like I'm in a fictional universe with NA Valorant. North America, up until this point, was the clout region. And after Sentinels dominated the game in the early stages of 2021, the next two international events were won by EMEA teams, and at Champions Berlin, two of the three NA representatives were out in groups. It was at this event that many would be introduced to the Guard, through their sponsoring of the Plat Chat co-stream, but it's very unlikely that anyone would fully comprehend the impact the team would have on the following year. Although the Guard's earliest matches saw the core members paired with the likes of Harmful, Drone, and Dicey, the first official iteration of the Guard's roster was announced on December 18th, 2021 and was comprised of Valen, the team IGL, who bounced around several teams in the ecosystem before settling on Complexity, Saya Player, a player that first made a name for himself in the Overwatch League before moving over to Valorant, Net, a tier 2 grinder who competed on several rosters before signing on to the guard, Psalm, known for his finish at the Fortnite World Cup, who swapped over to Valorant and spent some time on FaZe, Dignitas, and the original iteration of Squirtle Squad, and Jonah P, who much like his teammates Valen and Net, Jonah P spent a lot of time competing in Tier 2 and even competed alongside Valen on Complexity. They were coached by MCE, a former NACS GO coach who saw success with the Chaos Esports Club, a roster featuring the likes of Vanity, Zeppa, and Leaf. The vision upon the announcement of the team was clear. Assemble a team of passionate Tier 2 competitors and pair them with a coach that is experienced in working with young rosters. But this original iteration of the roster didn't achieve much. These underwhelming results prompted MCE to bench Psalm as he felt he was underperforming on Sova. Psalm would eventually be replaced by Trent, an absolute anomaly within esports. He didn't get his first PC until 2019 and Valorant was his first tactical shooter. His previous gaming experiences were Call of Duty, Rust, and Rocket League. He first came onto MCE and the guards radar during a scrim in which he played Viper. As MCE put it, one time, we faced him in practice, and he dropped 30 kills on us as Viper on Bind. At the time, Bind was a really good map for us, and it just didn't matter. Playing against us, he played around our lurk timings and did everything he needed to. Our staff joked at the time that we should pick him up right away. Trying out Trent quickly went from a joke to reality, after Trent faced up against a guard in a small tournament. His play against the guard prompted MCE to trial him. Trent quickly meshed with the team in scrims, and MCE remarked that he had a feeling that with better equipment and ping, Trent would perform fantastically with the team. The guard had found their fifth, and the addition of Trent made an immediate impact as the team was able to score a win in the Nerd Street Open after he was added to the team. Trent dropped a plus 17 scoreline in the Grand Finals, and the team had picked up some momentum heading into North America's first Open qualifier. The team easily defeated opponents in the round of 128 and 64, and in round 32, the guard would face off against FaZe and defeat them in 2-1 fashion. In their next match, the guard would defeat the Knights and find themselves matched up against Exet. With the guard having heaps of momentum heading into the match, it didn't seem impossible for the team to walk out with a victory. However, that was not even close to the actual result. Oh, Saya player goes out, not able to hit his shot. Zekin going in, taking down net. Now we're tied up at a 4v4, but four players from X are here. But only oh, two second. from Guard in second from the skies, taking down Sky and Jet. Now, now the Guard, Valen and Trent, both coming from two different directions, but there are four players in the front, two apiece. Let me know your quick That's Aaron spinning back towards screens is able to get one. Now the second from death on the operator, and it is a clean round from X set seven to one. And you know, we have a lot of situations where it's a lot of solo holds. One towards heaven, one towards oh. male, one on each side. So this is the fight that has to go the way of the guard. And unfortunately, it's not going wrong. Saya player going in though, he also has an off of his own, makes it down to a 2v2, only able to spot the head of death and not able to hit the shot. Death, however, kill. does pop down Trent of the 50-50 from the cosmic divide. Saya 
player now pulls out the knives after taking down Def. BCJ, headshot position on top of triple, looking for an angle onto Saya player. Saya, Spider, can he find something here onto BCJ? Set no, he match. cannot right here with a judge and one pump does it the spike at his feet and net has it all to do 40 seconds left i mean something could present it's already itself, it. but instead he presents himself to cryo third he's not gonna get it on though in. he does have bcj to support but he's got to back away in the meantime so much aggression no! out to be side and cryo again continue to fight him and death have to hold the cross they missed the shot but neither does death they are still holding on strong and will cryo continue oh, to duel the fact that they got so much mileage off of that, but Net coming up from behind, and he has to do it again. Two rounds in a row. Net on a post plant clutch has to go for a second. Oh Third no! Kill shot. is there, but second. Okay, that kill actually stopped. Oh, what timing? Jonah this P. Timing. He's got to come off. Oh, the timing. Oh, he cut him off. Takes down BCJ, but Zekin is just better. Gets the lineup on two, taking down Jonah P inside. Trent with the L drone, looking for that information. Oh, the ping's going to be good. Oh. oh my God, Trent, what a shot. Cryo cells sitting up in cubby, only popping the head. His head gets shocks. popped. Eight HP remaining. He does have double shocks, but he utilizes them so early. It hits on target, but Cryo cells is just better. Nine to six going back to exit but what an attempt for trent but i mean they need to be some of the oh, best damn flashes i've ever seen he's got already a lovely flash but no i think he even blinded himself cryo cells is gonna find him continuing to charge into the site it's just Saya player Luca's already what? smoked off and he traces it right to the body it's a phantom but he still knows 10 to 6 no. exit Saya player, he has a satchel, he Sorry, has a bro. showstopper, could definitely try, Nate comes out so early, well showstopper is stopped, Zekin takes him down, Valen and Trent now the last two remaining, they have to pop out, dry, with absolutely nothing through the cosmic divide, their options are completely empty, they have nowhere to go, and all they have to do the is go got down stopped. to the losers. Bracket. still had a chance to qualify through to the group stage with a win over a crew. We have a double fight coming in from the back, and look at the trick or discipline, that's one, two, and three really quick, Opening up the C site. We have a late flank coming in as well from Calm, but for the rest here for uh, A Crew, they're just trying to get this information. They're actually spending out the Hunter's Fury, oh, oh. and it's all pancakes so far. He does get another ping and a kill of the Saiyan player. So this allows Calm actually to go for a flank, but he's stopped by Trent down towards the hell side. Life. We have Shark Darts now going on default. A Hunter's Fury being forced out now from Trent. It's a three on one again, as we mentioned before. And now one pushing down towards Long A. He does get the kill. It's the fuse on halfway. He's trying to get the kill, but runs out of bullets and no time on the Defuse. Now it's Neon looking down as the Cypher is pushing down as well to try to re-clear Garage. We know he talked about that flank. Blake Storm for a Saya player. Cloud Burst in the front of sight. A double swing for the attackers here in the oh. front. And what a shot here from Saya player. Two daggers He's in the fire. face of Tom and Pancakes. And that's going to be the guard at that point. Confident for them to move in, and here comes the blade storm out though. The two backside works out as Net does get the headshot onto Neon to cancel out the ult. Now the spray just to try to get the o uh, the lockdown down. It has a bit of a He spots the first one. He knows the second one's in the back of the site. So he links across, gets that kill. The last one's in the back side. Now he gets canceled. Fragment on the right side, drop it in on that left, and that's the kill for Jonah B. And we got a bunch of trades going in. Trent's on a two versus one, looking to clutch this, but the spike is down. Cosmic divide on the defender side. He's trying to hold back towards the sidewalk a lean out for the first goal. oh what a flick they on to pancakes and it's gonna be the guard winning this 13 to 7. And it seemed almost absurd that the guard had gotten this far but they had punched their ticket to the group stage where they would soon compete with na's top competition the guard looked good but they still had some holes to patch as in the following nerd street event they competed in they lost to teams like zero marksman black and knights in the opening week of NA Challengers play though, the guard captured a statement victory over LG once more, silencing any doubts that they could compete. They dominated map 1, 13-1, and staged an amazing comeback on map 2 coming back down from 8-4 to win 15-13 in overtime. In their following match, they famously 13-0 would 100 Thieves to close out the series in 2-1 fashion. However, like before, the guard found themselves heading into a matchup with Xset but this time with a little more experience under their belt. The newfound experience the guard had gathered clearly benefited them, as they were able to capture map 1 and push Xset to their limit on their map pick. In map 3 though, it was clear that the guard didn't just come to play, they came to win. Trying to make their way in now, and Sire is actually getting for- oh! oh my what god, what? How has he done second like that? And it's so, it's been so hard to get in now for them. They're losing all of these players and just dancing around at the top of the site. Nothing short of perfection here for BCJ. 
and the timing is with Nets. And there you go, making their way forward. Aaron indeed goes down immediately Jeez. to Valen, and they have lost the sight. It's desperate. And here is Trent. They've got a firing squad ready to go to receive this push, and they have annihilated everybody. 13 to 3. They've won it. A prime gaming flawless to end it. It was clear the roster was firing on all cylinders. Trent looked amazing. Sia player looked like a top duelist in the region, and Valen's IGLing had the team looking cerebral. Jonah P and Nett had flashes of brilliance whilst being amazing supportive players for the team. However, if one knew how the team had been preparing for their matches, it would become glaringly obvious that they were seeing such enormous success for a reason. According to Trent, MCE kept a notebook where he would write every mistake he saw being made and would discuss how to fix them with each player. On top of MCE's mentorship, the guard's work ethic was world class, scrimming five times a day, six days a week, with review and personal mechanics training on top. It was clear that they were out for blood and would do anything to reach the top of Valorant. In the closing week of groups, the guard would face off against Cloud9, in a matchup that few expected to feature two undefeated teams. While the guard started strong on map 1, winning Bind, a future map of theirs, 13-7, it proceeded to get absolutely picked apart on the following maps, winning just 6 rounds across both. Leaf absolutely torched them on Haven, a map that the guard had been picking in many previous matchups. Leaf ended up dropping over 500 ACS in the process. While the loss was not the end of the world, it left a sour taste in many people's mouths. C9 was considered to be at the top of NA at this time, and they had absolutely dismissed the guard like they were nothing. While the guard had an impressive run up until this point, the loss to C9 felt like a reality check in the midst of the team's fairy tale run. They were good, but they were not yet great, and despite win after win in the group stage, the guard were certainly still beatable. Their opening match in the main event Iceland qualifier would be against Sentinels, who although we're in the midst of a downswing, were still a feared team. It would be a matchup between the newcomers and the veterans, and a match that many spectators were eager to watch. And they've taken some space. Ah, uh, they haven't, okay, that's certainly gonna help things. Side player, he's tagged up, he's beaten, he's battered, oh, no. he's bruised, but he finds the opening that he's looking for as the guard managed to march through the defenses of Sentinels. And oh, it's not quite connecting there on the default spot, and Dapper just, Jumps down on his own. Saya player gets another kill. I think he was trying to swing. At the same time, Shaz was coming around over by screens, but... Not done quite yet, but they can taste it. Victory just on the other side. And there are only three players. Make that two. Standing between the guard and a 13-1 to one win on Icebox and a 2-0 sweep of Sentinels in the opening round of this playoff tournament. And as quickly as it started... The guard had dismantled and embarrassed Sentinels and scored another convincing win over LG the following week. In the upper final though, the guard would suffer a loss to Optic, a team that seemed to be clicking once more after their early exit at Champions 2021 to X10. This match is notable for another reason though, that being that Ye played full-time Chamber. While Chamber was certainly finding his way into the meta at this point in time, he was not quite at his perma-run state. However, the presence of Chamber would unknowingly serve as a bad omen for the guard. After their loss to Optic, the guard seemed to be out. They once again suffered a defeat to a top tier NA team, and while they still had a chance to qualify against C9, this was C9, the team who utterly embarrassed them the last time the two faced off. The guard, as everyone would soon learn though, did not take their losses lightly. He's testing the waters, Joan P going hunting again across the middle of the map. Trent's giving up the space. He doesn't know that Leaf is here. He has no clue. Clean him up anyway. But Sia player with the blades. He was set up. He was patient. So far advanced. And he hasn't moved. I mean, then why would he? He's got the spike there. A third. Brazil over the last two series. So one versus two. He's going to have to go ballistic here, and it's not happening. Trent cleans him up with the third on the round as the guard take the lead right back. So it's going to be a straight up 2v2 and the clock ticking. In the background, the utility drops. Zappa does too. Vanity in this 1v2 with the snake bite. As he pushes forward, he's able to isolate the gunfights. One! A little bit of a Cupid shuffle. As he tries to stay alive. Fallon pushing the tap, the shots. Vanity with three as the Red Bull clutch comes through for Cloud9. Don't want to be TPing a bit. What a shot though from Leaf onto net. Attack. In through mid, Jonah P has a lot of No way, one, two, the knife comes out, but he's not able to land shots, didn't know Zeppo was there. It's balanced just on the other side of the wall, no, he wasn't looking, Zeppo with three massive kills, the game of cat and mouse goes in favor of Zeppo. Wall up. Oh, oh no, 
Oh, side player with the clap. The sword! It says how they do it. The blade storm out now. Vanity looking to get the defuse, and he's going to do it. My gosh. And they find the openers. 5v3. The guard finally in a position to put him away. For Zeta Fall. 17 15. The guard holds serve. As close as we Overtime victory on map one. The guard would take map two rather easily, setting up for a map three on split. The guard had captured four rounds on the attack side of split and set themselves up to take the series on defense. The patience out from Balin. The leader for the guard gets three massive kills. What a play. What a play from Valen, but the round's far from over. <laughs> Never mind, it's over. It's leaf. Working his way forward. Trent is a menace, my goodness. Valen does it as well. Vanity in a 1v3 with a classic. No armor to his name. Valen One push their way forward. Leaf back sight. Vanity up from heaven. Perhaps he can cause problems as the kills get traded back and forth. Two members left on the side of the guard as Leaf goes in. No! Into the smoke, but Valen! Valen! Lands those shots, he gets the third! The guard takes the lead! He's backside, he's in a world of hurt, Fallon! Oh, but Leaf with the showstopper from Evan finds one, and that's all it is! Mitch is alone in this 1v3! That's holding him. So difficult. The guard. Can they hold fast? Can they keep them back? An excellent opener out of Saya. As Saya gets a second. Oh, it's all over. That's it, baby. Pack your bags from rookies to Reykjavik. The guard are headed to Masters. Valen went utterly nuclear on split, dropping a plus 17 scoreline on Omen, willing the team to victory. The guard had done it. They had qualified for an international event on their first try all the way from the round of 128 and proved that they could bounce back even after a tough loss. They now had a chance to fight for the number one seed coming out of North America against Optic, something that would have seemed impossible just months prior. The first four maps of the series were rather lackluster, with each team handily winning their map pick, setting up a map five. It was on map five that the guard found themselves down 9-4, and it seemed as though Optic had their number once more. And the timing this time for Optic through mid-map with numbers, mind you, could maybe open up the doors, but nah, Valen! Not interested. And as the fight now takes place over the tunnel, it's Jonah and Trent for the double. FNS and Yay, last one's left, but as FNS actually finds one, Yay may commit forward here. Sure, they will. They have an opportunity maybe to deny the exit. You've got Side Player cutting back around the backside of flank, though, and Trent needs to keep his life. Not able to. Now it's down to Saya. Misses the first couple of laps, gets the refresh, and the double from Saya brings us to a not enough game at nine. Number three. Yay, too good from deep. El Diablo tries to rendezvous back. But is this a divine comedy for Dante's Inferno by Saya Player? 1v1 with Crouchy! Oh, what? Bang! Saya Player finished the map with an insane clutch to cap off a fantastic map five performance, and the team captured the number one seed heading into their first Masters event. Saya's resurgence on the guard was not something that many in the scene expected. He had previously competed in the Overwatch League for the Florida Mayhem and made the All-Star game in the 2019 season. Despite his individual skill, Saya player saw very little success in the Overwatch League as his team finished their opening season with a record of 7-33. In the following year, Saya switched over to Valorant, competing for T1. Saya player was splitting time between Omen and Jet, a rather confusing delegation of roles for a player to play. In spite of these odd choices, this T1 roster wasn't horrible. They were, however, exceptionally mediocre, and never broke through to win anything significant. The guard had trialed Saya before on the flex role, but he had rather unimpressive results. However, MCE saw his mechanical potential, and felt that T1 always performed best when Saya was on jet. So I said to him, if you can play and show them what I know you're capable of, I really think these guys will have you as their main duelist. And Saya didn't disappoint when it came to trialing for the primary duelist role. He secured his spot on the roster and flourished within a great system of supportive players around him. The guard would be automatically seeded into the playoffs and once more had to face off against Optic. The series seemed to be even until the guard began to pull away on the first half of Fracture. Optic looked flat and were relying heavily on hero plays from the likes of FNS to keep their hopes in the series alive. It seemed as though the guard were going to do it until a round 16 ace for Marv gave Optic the lifeline they needed. Now moving forwards, Net tries to swing the rest of his team, now it's just going straight through, Orbital Strike splits up the side, but the timing as they push through. That's 
quite fantastic. Marbs staying alive, 75 HP, four kills. Potentially the ace to try and close it. That is immense. What is it, the chance? Down. You see the Molly can be through, the swing timing, the stun, it's all there. One more flash available. It's a nice dodge from Victor and the coverage in the pit as well. They knew that Jonah P was going to swing off. Three, 25 seconds left. They're just trying to squeeze it out. Valen, the third four, and swings through. And finesse into the back. He's so low, but he drops down. Valen is finding the fire rate, and the swing again is there. Finesse, what a performance. Shuts it down. The guard had lost the series against their domestic rivals, Optic, and dropped down in the lower bracket where they would find themselves facing off against Paper Rex. Forcing Net to take the initiative, and he's gonna have to do it. That guy's there, he's waiting, he lands the shots, and he gets the kill for Paper Rex. And PRX continue to push towards C. The paranoia is gonna delay things a bit, but it's countered by paranoia of their own Stunned. and the, and the Leer that we've seen many a time. This time the guard seems to be holding up okay, but Forsaken not satisfied. So patient. Really, not a whole lot for Saiyan can do though. Once again, on the tap, the spam through smoke. He's able to get one. Saya, no more smoke. Half. He's so weak. Another tap for Saiyan with the blade storm. First shoulder, the second, the blades not landing. The, the vandal. He has to reload. He saw the op come it's out. It's a game of chicken. It's for Saiyan. Does it? The 4K, the Red Bull clutch for Paper Rex. Still have a couple of key ultimates to work with. You can see Forsaken wanted to go, man. He's got the operator and he hits two. Oh, now he repositions, goes up top. No way, this is how Haven ends. Saya trying to spam through the smoke and Jake's waiting for it. He gets a second, he gets a third. And now the showstopper becomes a problem. Trent, Valen, the two, they're there, but it's the ace for Jing to get them to six to tie us up to close the half. They're on top of each other. Trent with the flash, Trent with the swing, not able to land the shots, it all falls down to Valen. Oh, he's gotta make magic happen. 30 HP, six bullets left, outnumbered, outgunned, and falls. The guard proceeded to get overwhelmed by Paper X and bombed out of their first Masters event in O2 fashion. Their journey was nothing to be ashamed of, but it was clear that the lack of experience really hurt the guard at Iceland. After the match, Valen and MCE both discussed how land nerves impacted the team's confidence and performance at Iceland, with MCE saying the team simply got outplayed and outgunned. He continued saying that the small differences in preparation at land compounded and created a worse performance from the team. However, hope was not even close to lost for the guard. Following their poor result at Iceland, Valen remained optimistic, having this to say to the fans. Uh, to all the fans that support us, thank you guys so much. All your support like really means the world to me and my team. I'm sorry that we couldn't come out with the expected results. We will come back stronger and you know, I, I think we'll make the next we'll make the next international land and we'll make you guys proud. However, despite the optimistic attitudes of the team's IGL and coach, the guard began to slip after their loss at Iceland, losing three of their next four matches domestically. Net had been playing chamber for the team, and while his chamber was serviceable, it left something to be desired, as the chamber mantle was now being taken up by the team's most mechanically gifted player. Players like Ye and Cryo were dominating on the agent, and Net was just clearly not at this caliber. While Saya player was on the team, they had tried him at chamber and found it just didn't fit his playstyle. The lack of a star chamber player was hurting the team's performance, however they could still qualify into the playoffs heading into the last week of groups. All they had to do was beat NRG, a very possible win to attain as NRG, like the guard, only had a singular win in the group stage. Opportunity for Texto to do some damage and there you go, okay, Prowler, what about the player, quick little tap, one, two, he's on three, you've got to be joking, five bullets left, taking it anyway, that is just Way too clean, man. This push looks so bold, but once again, Hayes might get caught. I mean, they're just clearing the wrong angles. They're holding the wrong angles. Not expecting that one. Trent, though, still now he's trapped, though. Sal, how is he hitting these shots? How on earth is he going to spray You have got to be joking. He's still holding this deep position. Up into the corner, gets spotted out. Dangerous angle to hold here, especially when the play's returning. Holy... Has no information, could have just contacted pass, could be anyway. You can see the uncertainty in the play. Oh my word, what a shot from Fallon. Both Astras. He knows that there could be a player just playing around. Shoot, there's the one, there's the second. You have got to be joking. 
text is far too clean and now he's got the additional info swings round a bit of a whiffage but there we go trent nrg not finding particularly value from playing that heavy off-site situation wait a second you is like no up. he's no got read way. no shot so low and he holds it in the smoke i cannot believe it However, it just wasn't meant to be. No one in particular showed up for the guard in their matchup with NRG, and the team went out with a whimper on split, looking like a shell of their former selves. It was clear that the guard were aware that they needed to solve their chamber problem, as they entered a Nerd Street tournament before LCQ in an attempt to pan out their roles. Jonah P, who at times would take up the op on Sage, would play chamber on certain maps, and Saya would fulfill the role in other instances, but neither seemed like a good solution. As the slide only continued, the team that made an international event earlier in the year finished behind the likes of Soar, Knights, Academy, and Dark Zero. Things were looking bleak for the guard heading into LCQ, as multiple other teams competing in the tournament looked poised to perform better than the guard. They would open the tournament with victories over Sentinels and Cloud9, picking up a bit of momentum prior to their matchup with FaZe, one of the favorites to win the whole tournament. To be is going to be the plant actually to the other side of things, so all of that utility that's being dumped in is going to be missing. Not quite still, the spike is not going down. Now the showstopper just to try and stop them. Dicey moves forwards off to the side. Spike has been planted somehow, some way. Dicey, this is being salvaged. Dicey is Asi Menace. How is he getting away with this? They're both looking the wrong direction at the moment. Flyer just picks up a in time. Headhunter, time running a bit low. Dicey just running rings around it. He knows that he can play this. He knows that angles have to be cleared by Jonah P. Walking his way through. Not even a tap. Not even an attempt of it. Just gets half. Oh, that? A 180 into the shot. I mean, Poise has a Spectre. Superman has a Sheriff. This is all but wrapped up. And look at it. The paranoia, the flash, all being accompanied into the back of the side. They know where the final player is. Oh, the weapon rate. No way. Did he take it? Oh, you just caught that hug into it. How does he win that? How do you win that? You should not be favored. Not with the operator holding it, but still, he claims the kill. 3v3 for them and phase oh, yeah. rotated in with 15 seconds left. Now trying to get that spike planted down just off onto the edge of it. Jonah P ready and waiting again. You can't hold that angle with Snowman effect. It's still a double up play. Maybe just swinging, trying to deny the plant. He does what he can, but eventually fall into that one side line of fire. Oh. The pressure in the world on his shoulders. That again running into the pit. Please find it all on the line. 1v1. Net versus Dicey. Snake oh, bites drop through and the angle he's just pushed his way through it. Dicey. It's gonna be dropping down as it is expiring. You need to swing this one. He can hear the footsteps and all the pressure. The guard stomped phase, and were starting to be taken seriously as potential candidates to win the LCQ, but they had to face off against another young, hungry roster in 100 Thieves. The spam onto the wall, you got to take out the segments of his side player. Up close and personal now with the sword of force, and that's going to be the resurrected eye! Oh, three shots, three kills! Fires the pit. Moving across here, all down to Derek, but this can shock us. Anything online, shock dart. One, two, we're gonna spam. Stay oh, no away. How? Picking up a gun or two there. Spectre now, Derek wants to take the fight. What a shot to hit. Man, a shot to his knees. It's down to net. He knows where the last player is. Molly out in his hands. That could be the critical mistake, but the off angle by Derek is too damn. Until we're sent through onto this plan, another smoke makes it incredibly difficult for Jonathan to get He's done. Headhunter. Now Horse still being played, a bit of a jiggle of the move with Jonah P. He did get a lot of work done. In fact, Trent was swaying to the side. Him and Sire play it, evens it up, but now it's just bang versus Sire. Rotates around, time. Burning onto the clock, a bit of a run and gun by Sire, and he knows not enough time for him to work with. There, the job is done for 100 Thieves. The way 100 Thieves have been playing these individuals, I want to count them out. Give it a moment, back play to try and push into the spawn. That's managed to even it up. It's a 2v2. No, come on, popped off. This could be it. Now to just Valen. He's found the angle and he's found the kill. The spike in the hands of Stella. Where's the reposition? The fight is won. Making it feel like that he's gone behind them. You have to check the back. Aggressive though is the nature, it's the name of the game. But this time absorbed. 100 teams seem ready for it. They know 
God loves to be proactive in terms of taking this space and still trying to hold down the angles with these rifles, Derek. It comes down to this. All on the line, all for Istanbul, and the double face will finish it. A hundred thieves are going to Istanbul. A hundred thieves were simply too much for the guard. And although they had rebounded at the end of the year, their year still ended in disappointment. The guard had failed to live up to the hype, as at the start of the year, many foresaw them being mainstays at the top of NA Valorant. Regardless of their own finish though, the guard inspired confidence in tier 2 competition throughout North American Valorant. In the year prior to the team's ascension, NA Valorant was primarily about name value and clout. The guard ushered in a new era of tier 2 grinders in Valorant that has altered the state of tier 1 Valorant. Their emphasis on internal improvement, committing to their players and molding them to fit their system, boot camping, and scrimming non-stop demonstrated that the most mechanically gifted players were not always necessary to create a highly competitive team. Of course, they were certainly not the first team in North American Valorant to implement a rigid team structure. Optic Gaming saw success with their system all year, and as Valen put it, quote, nobody in the NA scene works harder and scrims more than us aside from Optic. But Optic Gaming also has world-class players on every role. The Guard has fantastic players themselves, but they punch far above their weight. It's no coincidence that the Guard's rise to the top coincided with many teams' newfound emphasis on team building, discipline, and systems. The Guard, despite floundering late in the year, prompted changes throughout North American Valorant, and the scene is better off because of it.